achieved. Welcome everyone to Studio Day Hefri for another day of Cowboys Chatter. And to uh, the people who have asked, Jeff, will you do Rangers content if you get good questions? Sure. Uh, do whatever I want. I think that um, over the years of broadcasting in DFW through the relationships that I've made and the work I've done on different things involving like the draft and other stuff with the Cowboys, it seems like that's probably what a lot of people are here for. But I'm here to do whatever I want. So, yeah. You want to talk Rangers? You want to talk about how Joey Gallo is a monster who's going to win multiple MVP awards in his career? That's cool. And how he probably doesn't have a lot of help. And hopefully the owners will sell the team. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about how the Mavericks can't play fourth quarters? And how the Mavericks had Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton early in the third quarter get their fifth fouls. So the Suns' two best players had to leave the court and the Mavericks fell apart? And they couldn't make a three to save their lives in the fourth quarter. The Suns were burying everything. And they refused to go to the hoop, which is weird because it's like the NFL's version of passing versus running. Versus running, like threes are more efficient. But if you can't hit a single three, Luca's getting to the bucket at will. KP's hitting the mid-range jumpers. Just take your two points, okay? For crying out loud! That's how Luca was getting all his buckets. Get to the paint. Get to the free throw line. Ah. Uh, but yeah, today's about uh, some cowboy stuff. I've gotten a ton of questions from you guys in the comments. So salute to the 16 percenters who are subscribed and have subscribed and have the notifications turned on. 16 percenters, you're the real heroes. Today's hair is brought to you by I showered last night and then I woke up. That's what this version of the hair is. Chris on the YouTube channel was the guy who asked me to go hatless yesterday. And he asked me if I could do a standing video today. And the answer is no. I can't because of my setup. Uh, my camera is set up on a thing that's only that will only get like, I can't really show you guys, but it won't get super tall and it sits on the desk and it doesn't, I don't have like a stand that could go way up. Otherwise I could stand up, but I really don't want you guys to see the rest of this room because I think with this backdrop, it looks like this room kind of has it together. It doesn't. This room is a train wreck. Okay? All right. Cowboy stuff. First thing that somebody asked today. Let me see if I can find the uh, proper man here to make sure that I uh, get it right here. And so what I do is I copy and paste a bunch of comments. If I'm like, oh, yeah, that's worth answering on the next video. Uh, and then I'll remember, like, one of them. And I'm like, oh, okay, and that makes a decent headline. So I'll put it in a little scroll for, like, the three wide receivers breaking 1,000 yards. So I put that in the scroll. But I don't move wherever that question was in my copy and paste fest. So there's like 60 things copy and pasted, and now I have to go find it. Found it. This is from Big Papa Pump. I guess he's a Scott Steiner fan. Is that who that was, Scott Steiner? How many times have three receivers had 1,000-plus yards on the same team? Has it ever happened? And he says Antoine Woods better be on this team. Yes, it has happened. CD's in the backyard barking, so now Stomp wants to go join. Oh, and she just unplugged my monitor, so I can't see. I can't see myself. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to plug that back in. Excuse me. All right, it's, my monitor's booting up. Let me see. I'm back. I guess I was always here for you guys. I could have just pretended that didn't happen. Uh, the answer is Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Teams have had three 1,000-yard receivers on the same team. I'll give you guys four seconds before I start listing them. Can you name any? Who jumps to mind? Because when we were talking about the best wide receiver trios of all time off the top of my head the other day uh, on the radio, I was like, well, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Jake Reed was really good. Rams' greatest show on turf with um, Bruce – and Tory Holt and Azakim, Azahir Akim, and, uh, you know, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison, Stokely. That was good. Here's the three that have had three, or here's the five that have had 3,000 yard receivers. The 1980 Chargers. How about that? Kellen Winslow, John Jefferson, and Charlie Joyner all went over 1,000 yards. They all went over 1,100 yards, as a matter of fact. 
1989 Washington football team club. Art Monk, Ricky Sanders, and Gary Clark. 1995 Falcons, if you count Eric Metcalf as a receiver. Eric Metcalf, Terrence Mathis, and Burt Emanuel. The 2004 Colts, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Brandon Stokely. And the 2008 Cardinals, Larry Fitzgerald, Anquan Bolden, and the random, awesome Steve Breston season. And can the Cowboys do that? Dude, yes. Yes, the Cowboys can do that. All you have to do is look at a year ago. Now, I don't think Dak's going to throw for 4,900 yards again because that's a really big number. But even if he throws for 4,500 yards or whatever, which is totally normal in the NFL now, a year ago you had 1189 from Cooper, 1107 from Gallup, and 828 from Randall Cobb. And he had a couple of big plays called back by penalties. And now Jason Witten and his 63 catches are gone. They're not here anymore. So, C.D. Lamb's going to get some of those 83 targets that Jason Witten's leaving behind. Uh, If you have no injuries, then for sure you have a chance at that. Because you also had guys get banged up, and that's what, nine targets for Devin Smith, eight for Cedric Wilson, one for Ventel Bryant. Touchdown. Dalton Schultz had a couple. Tavon Austin had 24. So, if if they're all healthy, I would predict it. Yeah. Cowboys will have 3,000-yard receivers if they all three play 16 games. Faux show. Bank on it. Bet on it. And then maybe I'll be wrong because that's how the world works sometimes. Mason. Oh, I want to do this one at the end. I'm sorry. I'm jammed up with the allergies right now. Uh, Mason, I'm going to get to yours at the end. A sir says, if Dak and Dalton both had to miss a game, what's the backup plan? Rookie or vet? 1652. Notifications on. My guy. Uh, It's Danucci. It's Ben Danucci. I mean, for real. Clayton Thorson's on the roster. But if they both had to miss one game? Yeah, I don't think there's a dude on the streets you would go sign. No, you'd roll with whatever you got. You got the Nooch. What are you scared of? Uh, there's the right wide receivers question. Cody Brooks. Hey, Jeff. Made it to 1704, and I'm in the 16% club. Love the show. What are your thoughts on Dak's tendency to throw slightly off target, causing our receivers to throttle down or stop to make the reception and costing yak opportunities? Love Dak as our QB. Just gets frustrating seeing that tendency happen too often. Also, what's your favorite cut of steak? Mine is Delmonico. Yeah, if I have to... Um, try to pick one thing to get Dak to improve on this year. I think my top one would be checking out of plays and ignoring your coaching staff when you know what the right play to run is. I think that would be number one. But ball placement would probably be number two. Crossers, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's behind. And he's not unique in that. I'm not going to pretend that he's throwing bad passes. Uh, But, yeah, ball placement, I think that's one of the things that Dak could improve on a little bit, and that would be lovely. Then you can go win the Super Bowl. Sean Felty, over the next three years, you think the Cowboys and Eagles continue to battle for the top spot in the division, or will the Giants and or Washington turn things around? Well, if you watched a video, I think it was last week, the Eagles are like $80, $90 million over the cap next year already. (laughs) It's not the COVID. Um, So I can see the Eagles falling off. The Cowboys, depending what happens at quarterback long-term, shoot, they could fall off. But which team out of Washington and Dallas is better equipped to take it? Maybe Washington. They both got work to do in terms of team building, and they both need their young quarterback to become a really good player. And I don't know which one you'd be more likely to better. Like Daniel Jones has had good games. His problem is just he loves to fumble. And then Dwayne Haskin had a couple of good games. So I think he this year is somebody that, I don't know, like you go in. I, I, I liked Haskins coming out of college. I believed in Dwayne Haskins. They don't have great receivers, though. Neither do the Giants. They'll pretend they do. They don't. I don't know. I think who is the teams competing to win this division two or three years from now will be determined by this past draft and the next couple. I think that'll be that'll go a long way because the Cowboys here in a couple of years – will be in a position to get out of pretty much any contract on the roster. So they're wide open to what is this team going to be? Are they going to have to rebuild? Which they, well, they would never do that. So we'll see. It's wide open. 
Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Kurt Koenig. Yo, Jeffrey, subscribed and getting notifications. I work in a call center. Can't listen on the radio, but I always look forward to Jeffrey time on YouTube daily in between calls. I also watch all the stuff produced by the Cowboys and wish you were there for more than just the draft because you're thoughtful, honest, and awesome. How's that for sucking up? It's good, Kurt. Good job. But hey, it's all true. Oh, I'd like to know, based on your position group breakdown, how the special teams is going to rank this year. If Greg the leg tanks it, do you think Forbath will still be available if they need him to save the day again? Always make it to 1652 or whenever you choose to end. I prefer chili and cheese on hot dogs and some spicy mustard. Um, well, the special teams can't be as bad as they were, and to me that's all that matters. I don't care if you're second or third in the league in special teams. Uh, as long as you're not worse than 25th. And they were just so bad last year. You can't, how do you be terrible at kicking field goals, at punting, at covering punts, at covering kickoffs, at kick return, at punt return? You can't be bad at everything, but they pulled it off. They pulled it off. They'll be functional on special teams, and that's all they need. And then they need to go score a ton of points. That's all they got to do. Bluff City Cowboys. I believe I did a podcast with you, sir. What's up? Anybody have any medicine for me? What do you guys use if you need a cough drop? I like the Rico La little guys. I may have some Rico La somewhere around here. I also think I have some elderberry somewhere. Great videos. Been a loyal follower for years. Hypothetically, if D-Law opts out, it opens up $22 million this year. He's not opting out. If we could use that to get two defensive ends, combination of Clowney, Clay Matthews, Everson Griffin on a one-year rental, and get D-Law back next year, how would you feel about that? I mean, if yeah, if you got Clowney and Everson Griffin, uh, I'm just talking about the players here because I do hear some some things that teams um, don't necessarily want Everson Griffin on the team. And But, yeah, I would take Clowney and Griffin on a one-year rental and then have Tank come back a year later. But Tank is not opting out. He's going to be here. So chill out. Uh, Jedi Mind Tricks, 2120. Huge fan of the show, Jeff. Watch every video, and I'm a huge Cowboy fan. But I do have a question. Why do you hate on Jalen Smith so much? Losing LVE didn't help him. The D-line was a mess. No one could tackle. I think Jalen's better when not all the pressure is on him. I think every linebacker is better when he's getting competent defensive line play in front of him, when your defensive tackles aren't letting people get free access to come block you. Um, I don't hate on Jalen Smith. If you view my interpretation of the sort of player that he is as hate, you just like him too much. And I love Jalen Smith. I think he's a great story. I think he's a somewhere between a decent to solid starting linebacker, and two years ago he flashed that he could be more than that, so hopefully this year with competent defensive tackle play, Jalen can be back, kick him butt. That'd be great. He's just always going to have a little bit of a deficiency in terms of open field tackling because if guys cut back, he can't really stop and go like that, and he'll always have a little bit of a deficiency when it comes to coverage for the same reason. But if he's just zone dropping, playing, coming forward, blitzing, then he can be a he could be a good starter. Uh, Grig, sports gun to your head. Do Cowboys win a Super Bowl in the next three years if they sign Dak? No, I'll say no. Um, oh, do you want to know if they don't sign Dak? No, winning a Super Bowl is really hard. The odds that one of the thirty-two teams is going to win a Super Bowl in the next three years is low. If you have Pat Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, your chances are probably improved. Like, if you said, will the Chiefs win a Super Bowl in the next three years? I'd probably say yes. I'd probably. If I had to gamble on it, Ravens, I might say yes. Everyone else in the league, I would say no, because you're just playing the odds. Three chances, 32 teams? No, I don't think so. Okay, and finally, let me go back to my buddy Mason here. Made it to 1652. Part of the 13 and a half slash 16% crew. Ah, that means you got the push notifications and the notifications turned on. But my question is, how have you maintained your mental health throughout the COVID-19? I have asthma and even going outside to do some chores makes me uneasy. Thanks. You're my, by far my favorite sports reporter. Uh, the answer to that is uh, not the best. Like there are, uh, there are times this morning. Every morning and a lot of nights, 
uh, can be challenging for me. Depression, anxiety, mostly the depression, I think, is the problem in the mornings where I kind of struggle to just get going. So this morning, woke up at like 7.15, 7.20, probably got out of bed at 8.15, something like that, uh, because I just finally was like, hey, you're not doing yourself any good just sitting here refreshing social media feeds. Let's go. And so I went into the kitchen, and I made some eggs, and I made steak yesterday, so I had made some steak and egg tacos. And for me, that's kind of the key is just go, get going, and saying it to yourself is easier than doing it. Uh, so for me, uh, I think things that help me in terms of mental health, I've got like the calm app where you do guided meditations. I think those are awesome. Uh, I talk to a therapist every other Thursday, so that'll be this week. Um, uh, I don't do the best job because I spend a lot of my day just staying busy. Like I'll listen to audiobooks while I'm going to bed and then obviously you're watching whatever sports game is on and uh those aren't the best things for my mental health. What I should be doing is being quiet, not feeling like I have to be occupied, sitting with your feelings. Things to help though. Sorry. I'm, I just I ramble on this topic sometimes cuz I don't necessarily know where to go. Journaling. These are things that I feel better after doing. <clears throat> journaling before bed, just things about the day, like if there's something that's bothering you or if there's something that you're proud of, just get it out of your head and put it onto the paper, and it helps, kind of frees you up. Um, talking out loud, if you don't want to journal, whether that's prayer or whatever else, like if you want to talk to God, if you want to talk to yourself, if you want to talk to your dog, whatever, uh, I've found that it helps to get whatever is just <laughs> cluttered up in here and going nonstop. Toss it out there into the world. Let it go. So journaling, talking, uh, reading books that are useful, not necessarily just escape books, which is what I do the most of the time. I'll read my fantasy books and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes I do it probably too often. Um, but, like, I have anxiety and depression workbooks. I've got Brene Brown stuff, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. So things that I've found really useful. Journaling. Um, Journaling, meditation, therapy. I think that's a good starting list. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's it for today, folks. I love you guys. Uh, love you, bye is now my sign-off, right? Let me know if you're still here at 1744, especially now after your mental health therapy session. And, uh, yeah, hit me up if you're a 16 percenter. Let me know in the comments and what you want to talk about tomorrow. Let me know. I still got a bunch of questions from you guys because you guys are animals and there's hundreds of comments on every video. So I still got a bunch that I can get through, but it's great to just have the content rolling in and I can make a video for you as long as that content keeps rolling in. So send me what you want to talk about tomorrow. Um, did I do anything random for the comments today? Today in the comments. What do you think is the least important toe on your foot? Like, if you had to lose one, which toe would you give up? I'll tell you my answer next time. It might be a surprise. All right? So that's it for today. Love you. Bye.